lesser name is the population. Population studies are very very important in the any country to make the policies and to implement the planning for development of any country. So to calculate the population of every country, generally in India, the government of India will be calculate the population for every 10 years. That is called census. Okay, census. Census means uh, the government of India will be calculate the population of the country for every 10 years. The first census started by the British government in India in 1872 but practically implemented the census in India from 1881. Since then, the government of India, after independence, the government of India took the charge to calculate the population by establishment of NSSO. Do you know the abbreviation of NSSO? National Sample Survey Organization. National Sample Survey Organization. So, for every 10 years, it is going to collect the population details. In the calculation of population details, the government will take into consideration so various activity, various parts of the population like uh, age composition, literacy levels, sex ratio, density of the population, labor force, okay, Chil children's ratio. All these kind of uh, parameters are taken into consideration while calculating the census. The head office of NSS was located in New Delhi. Head office of, head office of NSS was located in New Delhi. So today I will go to show the video classes and different types of uh, experiments and practical notes in the data census, data entry classes. Okay? India occupies about 2.4% of the total land mass of the world, but supports over 17% of the world's population, and this population is constantly increasing. of the country and what is the percentage of the world population. As of your knowledge, India is one of the largest populated country in the world. So now we are in the first position. Present, uh, we are calculating or taking into consideration 2011 census. 2011 yes. census. Actually, in 2021, the government of India have to be collect the census, but uh, due to some of the constraints, the government of India have been postponed the calculating the present uh, census. Right now, we are using the census of 2011 only. According to 2011 census, India is the second largest populated country in the world with a 2.4 percent of the land in the world. Okay, the land size of the India is just 2.4 percent of the total globe size. Whereas the population of the India occupies 17% of the total world population. Means a small land is the home of the more people. A small land is the home of more people. Understanding? So this concept can give a clear information. The density of population also will be very higher. Density of population means uh, the number of people living per square kilometer. Number of people living per square kilometer is known as density of a population. 
see in india the highest population up the highest population was located in which state up up okay uttar pradesh so behind of highest population not only in the state but also across the country what are the main main reasons for the highest population in the world in india because of what there are different different uh, reasons are there social reasons economic reasons climatical conditions and others for example social reasons so no country in in the world we cannot see the giant family system in india we can see the giant family system present okay in the era of the globalization there uh, slowly slowly giant family system is going to disappear but once upon a time the indian society mostly connected to giant family system in the giant family system the population will be obviously will be very higher than the nuclear family okay and the cultural systems and the environmental climatical conditions india is the home of it's a place of our different types of our rivers like a perennial rivers and a non perennial rivers do you know the perennial rivers the rivers which are born in the himalaya mountains by melting of the snow they are converted into the water they will be flow the water throughout the year 365 days they will be flow the water without dry up therefore the where there will be a source of more drinking water there will be a population will be automatically increases if you observe the major cities in the world like london delhi all the new york whatever you take even hyderabad also if you observe all these cities these cities are formed beside of any some of the river banks okay so like that in north india many of the rivers are there like indus river ganga river brahmaputra river and other tributary of indus river many of the rivers are there jhelum like chenab ravitya satlej etc so beside of all these rivers the total north india occupies most of the population in the country right so these are the reason behind of the population see if you look at this chart the rate of increase in the indian population per year see per year around now 155 lakhs per year 1 crore 55 lakhs approximately it is equal to some of the small countries like singapore korea total population of the country understand it so per year you know the uh, uttar pradesh population is equals to usa population hello uttar pradesh population is total equals to that much of big country usa population equals to our only one state population so see per month the 12 lakh population increase per day 42000 birth rates are going on per hour 1700 per minute 29 children are born in the country so this much of rapid growth rate of population takes place in the country due to these reasons India became a second biggest corporate country in the world. Eventually, it went to first place. See, physical division. This is the one of the lab experimenter. See, if you observe the water bodies of the surrounding of uh, India. So, these are the sites, sir. see the behind of the high population in, in one country trade also play very important role why the people are going to settle in the cities you know compared to rural areas the cities having more density of population why because of all kinds of support businesses and the opportunities and facilities different types of opportunities will be available for the people in the cities that is why the people will go for the cities instead of living in the rural areas similarly india is one of the peninsular country india is one of the peninsular country it covers the three side of water which are most important in the in the world level bay of bengal indian ocean and arabian sea you know the indian ocean the the, the greatness of the indian ocean it is one of the way for the international trade for the different countries any country for example in the east side different types of uh, rich mineral resource countries are there like uh, singapore malaysia indonesia taiwan vietnam japan many of the countries are beside of this uh, ocean therefore the european countries and the american countries they want to do the trade with the east asian countries so if you want to do the trade with these countries they have to go along with the india only 
So while going and coming, the people are settled here. Right now also, if you observe Goa, Pondicherry, Tamil Nadu, Puttikoram, all these places covered with the farm people only. Many of the people we can see if you visit these places. Okay, Pondicherry, Chennai, Goa, Dayudaman, Puttikoram, and Lakshadweep. Many of these places are filled with the foreign national people. Okay, they are settled here because of trade. Because of a trade. Okay, this is also one of the reason behind our population. India is a land of rivers. Large and small rivers <coughs> such as the Ganga, Brahmaputra, Krishna, and Bellia are the lifeline of this country. Rivers that originate in the Himalayas are referred to as Himalayan rivers. While rivers that originate in the Indian Plateau region are referred to as peninsular rivers. This is the Ganga river system. This is the Ganga river system. So in India, Ganga river system is the largest river system. Okay, of course, in the Himalayan mountains, in Indus River is the largest river system. In the Himalayan mountains, the rivers which are born in the Himalayas, Indus River is the longest river. But Indus River just flows only in the Kashmir, around the 799 kilometers only. Okay, so the river which is flows more in India is Ganga. The second largest river system after Indus is Ganga. Within country, within our India, Ganga River is the largest river system. So, because it connected to many, many perennial rivers and non perennial rivers. Non perennial rivers means uh, the rivers which are found in the peninsular plain. That means of uh, Middle Arabia country, that means of uh, Vindhya Arabia and the uh, Sarpura mountains. And these are the perennial rivers like uh, Yamuna, Gandhav, Kosi, Kagra. So, many of the uh, perennial rivers are mentioned with the Ganga. Okay. So therefore, it is considered as it is one of the most most purified river in the country. Okay, if you observe the Ganga River, many of the populated cities, many many of the populated cities are existing beside of the Ganga River. You already studied in the lower classes, Janapadas and Mahajanapadas. Okay, 16 Mahajanapada story, I think you know very well. So many out of 16 Mahajanapadas, many of the Mahajanapadas are located beside of a Ganga River only. Okay. So if you see this, the population studies explain already I told you it covers the literacy levels of the country and the age group of the population, male female ratio, okay, and the composition of labor supply. Okay, for example. Uh, this is a pizza. Literacy leads to the development of a dash and a society. You. Find out answer. Read the question clearly yourself. See, traditional and industrialized. Wrong. You. Read the question, try to understand. Literacy leads to development of a dash and dash society. How the literacy helps to the society? The meaning of that? A. Civilized and progressive. Very good. Right answer. Okay? See, on the basis of this question, we can understand the sense importance of the sentence. Uh, sense is nothing but by uh, what is called uh, by calculating the population studies, population of the country, literacy levels also we can calculate along with them. Therefore, by learning or by calculating of literacy of the country, the government can make the policies or uh, plannings how to develop the society. See, civilized and uh, progressive. So, the government can understand where the setbacks are there in the country. Because India is one of the biggest size and uh, different types of uh, religious people, language people, cultural people. That is why it is known as India is a unity in a diversity. Okay, unity in a diversity. Therefore, the government can understand where the setbacks are there and try to fill the gaps. 
trying to fill the gaps. For example, some of the religious people they are backward in the literacy, then the government can prepare the special schemes to promote their education because education is playing a very important role to make them civilized and progressive manner. Second question. The people of village, for example, X, still practice age-old traditions and superstitions, which is the best method to do away with this kind of practice. You. Again, you read your question and you try to understand what the solution. Educate in the villages. The people of village X. Okay. Right answer. Good. See? So in a particular village, age old traditions and superstitions are going on. For example, Devapur, which is the best method to do away with this kind of practice. If you want to educate the local people, what is the best source? Education only. If they are going in a different direction, like the superstitions, then it is our responsibility to educate them. This is not the good scientific method. It is not a scientific method. By giving proper education, they can change their activities. Okay. So now in India, the government of India targeting 100 percent. What is called institutional deliveries. The government targeting the people of the country. They have to get 100 percent institutional deliveries. Institutional deliveries means. Uh, the pregnant women must be go for the hospital for their deliveries. Okay. For that purpose, the government of India implemented many, many schemes like Arukya Lakshmi, Telangana State, Aishman Bharat in central government level. Different types of schemes they are implemented because by studying the population only. Because still in the some of the corner places of the country, in the villages, they are still following the traditional methods. Traditional methods. By adopting the traditional methods, it will be dangerous to the mother or a child whenever they are going to deliver it to the babies. So that is why institutional deliveries are essential. For this purpose, government encouraging them to join in the hospital at free of cost. Before that, the government have to promote the female literacy. Female literacy. That's why in Telugu language, there will be one quotation. What is? Illari chalu, intiki velugu. Illari chalu, intiki velugu. A female person, if she educated, she will educate the remaining all the family members. If the wife will be uneducated, she cannot do anything. She cannot do anything because of the society never respect her family members, so children, husband, other also they will not respect her words because everybody will say don't anything. If she will be educated, she can educate the others also. Right? Girls, you read the question. What is the outcome of that situation? <coughs> what is the outcome of balanced sex ratio? It helps enhancing education system, it leads to social problems, it helps reducing social tensions, it creates new ideas in minds. Anyone can answer? Color. First of all, do you know all of your sex ratio? Sex ratio refers to that the female male ratio. Number of female for the thousand male people is called sex ratio. Number of female for one thousand male people is called sex ratio. Now, equal sex ratio is there in the country. What is the outcome? Or less sex ratio is there. What is the outcome? Outcome means the result. See, it helps to reduce social tension. If both male and female thousand thousand equally there in the society, then it leads to help to reduce the social tension. Your answer. Wrong. It helps enhancing the education system. It is also wrong. Yes, this is the right answer. See, nowadays, the new couples are not giving, or they are not considered whether female baby or male baby. Am I right or wrong? Once upon a time, before your generation, during my generation time, my parents or other relatives, they felt if male baby is there, they will be very happy. If female baby come, they will be very sad. During 20-30 years back. Right now, the young couples, they are not considered 
are not never take into consideration whether female or male. Now, government of India enabled the strict actions or implemented strict rules and regulations disclosing of fatal test. Fatal test means uh, fatal test means uh, uh, to know the a uh, baby belongs to male or female whenever she or he in the mother's womb. Doctors, if they reveal that is also crime. If the parents ask the doctor, this is also crime. That is why the parents are not asking. Doctors also, they never disclose the information whether male baby or female baby inside the womb of the mother. So therefore, after one or two children, according to their preferences, they are giving birth. Otherwise, they are, family, they are going to family planning operations. Understand it? So, create new ideas and development process, young minds. Okay? This should be uh, essential. This is essential to come in the minds of the people because uh, there is no variation. Male, female, both are equal. Right? So, next, uh, distribution of the population. I told you already what are the reasons behind the other population more or less in a particular region. Particular region. For example, Gulf countries are there. Saudi Arabia, Iran, Iraq, there are less population, whereas in the Asian continent like China, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, more population is there. What are the reasons behind of this kind of a distribution of a population in the different different regions? Like for example, Telangana, less population compared to UP. Do you know the status of Telangana population? Our Telangana state is the 12th largest state in terms of land also 12th rank, in terms of population also our place is 12th rank. UP is the first biggest populated state, whereas uh, land purpose Rajasthan is the first largest state in the country. Okay? Now. Over the centuries, river valleys have seen the cradle of human civilizations as human beings settled along major rivers of the world. History has proven that people prefer to reside in places Already, I told you the beginning only where the people are settled, or they are so interested to settle down. So these are the world's ancient civilization. I think you know very well when you are studying the history part. See, this is the Harappa Mahanjadara civilization, one of the world's ancient urban civilization. Urban civilization, present urban civilization, how it will be underground drainage, understanding double floor houses. Okay, for example, we imagine one house should be like this, one bedroom, one kitchen room, one two-year room, understand, all. This is the method of present the house construction. These methods are implemented in the thousands of years ago in the India, at the place of the Indus River Bank, the name of the civilization is Harappa Mohanjadaro Civilization. And uh, see, Tigris River, River Tigris, beside of this uh, river also, Iran, Iraq, Mesopotamia civilization is there. That civilization is different. And the Egypt Nile River is there, world's longest river. Here Egypt civilization is going on. That is that is different. Big size of all architectures. Okay, Egypt pyramids are there. Now. That civilization is different. This civilization is different. These are these are the famous for promoting trade. You know Ratandara, Tata group of families are there. Now. They are came from here this place only. So these people are the most famous to do the trade with other countries. Okay, they are migrating from this place to India. They are not by what they are here. Okay, so Chinese civilization. Okay, everything is different from each other. Every civilization have their unique feature. Anyhow, if you observe all this, only these places having more population in the world. Where these rivers are there, where these civilizations are to place in ancient time, these are the countries now having more population. Okay. Now, this is a population pyramid. Literacy pyramid is given. Different types of pyramids are there. Each pyramid generally, they will be in the triangle shape bone. Okay. You know very well. So, this Table explains about pyramid explains about the literacy, male female literacy. Okay? As for the mathematics, x-axis, y-axis are there now. 
Okay, so on x on x axis the population in thousands they are showing, on y axis age group years they are showing. Okay, so as for the rules and regulations, so always the male ratio we will be shown left side, female ratio we will be shown to the right side. Okay, now see these are light shaded bars. Light shaded bars are always showing the less than in the size compared to the male bars. Okay, so the mean the meaning of this pyramid clearly reflect that the female ratio is less than male literacy ratio. Okay, see present what is the literacy rate of the country in India? Seventy four point zero four percent. 74.04%. So within the 74%, 86% literacy rate achieved by the male, male people and the rest of the only just 63% of the literacy rate achieved by the female. Always there will be a discrimination or a undervalue of the female literacy from the ancient time to right now also. I told you already female literacy rate is playing very very important role in a country to decide its a fate, where there will be female get equal opportunity along with the male, the countries will be highly developed. For example, in the world, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark, these are the some of the small countries in the world. They are giving equal status, equal priority to the female people along with the male. In the bureaucracy, bureaucracy means public administration. Okay, bureaucracy means public administration. So, in the political activities like elections, contesting. So, in all the activities, the female size will be higher than male size in those countries what I stress right now. Okay, not in America, not in Australia, not in other countries. But a small Denmark, Sweden, Finland, Ireland, Norway, these are the top countries who are giving equal priority to the female along with the male. That is why they are the top most ranked countries in the form of HDI. You know what is the meaning of HDI? Human, Human, Human Development Index. Index. Okay. Development means not only in the form of financial or industries or buildings or roads or infrastructure but also education of the society, literacy of the society. Okay. And the social status of the people social status of the people, standard of living of the people, all these are social factors also take into consideration before calculating the development of the country. Okay, simply you are achieving good marks, it is not to reflect your development. If you get a good marks, 10 point 10, it is not the overall development of the student, your character, your attitude, your humbleness, everything will be decided. Understanding, for example, if you get an IIT rank in the any IIT institution, if you show your attitude towards other students, so nobody will accept your friendship. Without the other support, you cannot do anything, simply you will study the books only. So, sharing knowledge. So, who will have the more friends? Who will be easily communicate with others, mingling with others, and sharing with others? They only get developed this. That is the real development. Okay? Here also, country development simply not in terms of the form of economics, but also social development. So this is the literacy pyramid. So this pyramid explains about the discrimination of the female literacy. Okay.
and in age composition uh literacy is over who are able to read and write it over uh who are able to read and write that is called literacy and the density of population means the number of people are living per square kilometer is called density of population in india around 982 people are living per square kilometer okay that much of reason will be there on the earth okay and uh, sex ratio means the number of male people are per the female that is called as sex ratio usually it is measured per 1000 male people age composition so 0 to 5 years they are called children 6 to 14 years also consider as children but young children and 15 to 59 age group of people are known as adults adults okay 15 to 59 years of the people adults above 59 years they are called old age four classifications are there four types of age group are there okay so which of the group people are helps to development of the country in the 15 to 59 this age group of people are most important for deciding the development of the country because they are the working age group people hard working people understand it so they can achieve anything so now our fortunate is our means india fortunate is in the world we are the number one country who have helped more than 60% of the people belongs to this age group more than 60% of the india's population belongs to this age group of the society therefore all the countries developed countries are trying to build the friendship with the india not for the money not for the case here not for this because of india population okay we are the strength of the india the population of the country is the strength of the India. India, understand it. So this age group will decide. So this age group also most important to get the knowledge from them because they are the most experienced. They are the experienced people, and this age group is most important to provide education. That is why government of India always focus on this age group of people to protect them. Now government of India, according to the Indian Constitution, it is providing free and compulsory. Education. According to Article Four, Article, it is providing free and compulsory education, universal education provided to the six to fourteen years age group of the people. Different types of benefits also provided like a midday meal scheme. Understand it? You know that. So, like that, the government classified the age composition and. See one more piece. In the cities like Bangalore, one can rarely find the people working in the sector. So, thank you.